uh, is everyone familiar with a pool filter? Uh, the, the filter that gets the, the hair or the, the uh, debris of any kind in the, the water in the pool, it, the, all the water gets cycled through that filter and it gets filtered out. The water in the pool remains clean and fresh. Right now, our world in, in some very fundamental ways is operating in, in a corrupt way, in a dysfunctionally corrupt, taproot-focused feeding frenzy, uh, not so different than a crack addict looking for their next fix in regard to more finances, more power, uh, more control over the world and, and its, its dynamics. The way we have gotten things done in the past as a species was generally either through political, governmental requirement and, and, and guidance in organizing or through profit driven motivation. And, and we have way opened the valve on profit as uh, organizational profit as a, and solutions generation as a mechanism of solving world problems and are meeting world needs without adequate regulation, without adequate filtration. So instead of there being a filter in the pool, so to speak, we're recycling the sludge into the pool. We're corrupting our, our planet, we're corrupting our societies, we're corrupting humanity, it's mental and emotional and energetic dynamics with bias, prejudice, hatred, fear, uh, division, through many different means, social media platforms are generating this divisive dynamic, this separatist approach while simultaneously driving profit motive as the answer to all things and as, a, as the go-to paradigm for solutions generation. And so much so that the, we're becoming, we are at these lower chakra levels as a species, we're becoming so desensitized to the, the fact that we're, we're metaphorically walking through toxic waste every day on our way to work or, or, or through our life process that, that is, has been generated by us, by the collective, by for-profit organizations, by corrupt government or, or by simple ignorance or by accelerated adaptive technology development without adequate governance, without adequate understanding, blinded by this profit motive. Now, with COP26, from what I understand, they're trying to bring together trillions of dollars into a slush fund that would then be applied to changing the world, transforming the world in economies and generating solutions and all that sort of thing. That money is going to be a magnet likely for an awful lot of organizations to try to get their foot in the door with for-profit uh, solutions. And there are people who have been, might be called patent trolls they, they go out and have bought up as many patents as they possibly can prior to this recognizable unfoldment happening as it is beginning to happen now, this realization of the nature and dynamic dynamics and, and profundity and scale of the issues we're facing in part uh, so that they can make untold profit. Hopefully some of them would, would be trying to ensure that those patents were bought up preemptively so that they could offer them to the world for free, or they could offer them at cost or at, at, at little cost, if any. That would be a wished for, hoped for paradigm. Our intention as an organization in the WSS is to offer all the information that we produce for free to the world as educational materials that we are a nonprofit organization that requires us to govern our financial processes and to govern those materials and to copyright them and, and all of that. Because if we have materials that, are, that we utilize that are not copyrighted for our organization, people who contribute them could say, 
no, I don't want you communicating something that I've offered that's copyrighted out in the world. So I'm going to say no to it being utilized as educational materials. You can see that that if we if we work with our system of governance and, and intellectual property in that way, then if we had a thousand contributors, a thousand people could put a stick in the spokes of the process of serving the world for free. So what do we do? <laughs> we copyright everything. And that's just the way we do it. And that's been our uh, agreement collectively from the get-go. There is not an adequate fil corruption filtration mechanism. The game is rigged. We, we get that. That's not a criticism of the wealthy and the powerful of the world. They, they've accumulated their wealth. We've got a slide for tomorrow on this. The, the competitive dynamic leading to unbalanced accumulation and then once that unbalanced accumulation occurs, and it's, it's a very uh, unilateral application amongst a, a very small group of people on when, where, how, and why they want the world to evolve and develop their way. And that can occur behind the scenes without, without oversight, without governance, without filtration of the corruption. So this, this is a situation that needs to be resolved and sussed out. There's lots of ways it could happen, Nations not trusting each other could say, put in rigorous governance models on the application of this funding that's being brought together in CO, as a result of COP26. Yeah, assuming that the funding actually does arrive and people do, uh, nations actually do contribute openly and that hopefully the billionaires of our world will, will give to such endeavors, recognizing them to be for the good of all. And if, if we don't have a planet to to play on it, they're not gonna be able to fire rockets into space and they're not going to be able to have, have all the, the recognition for their, their status and power in the world that they would prefer. You see that self-interest is a, is a key core element of this mix, uh, whether it's national self-interest, organizational self-interest, uh, individual uh, powerful uh, and wealthy people's self-interest, political systems, self-interest, religious self-interest and cultural self-interest and ethnic self-interest, uh, gender self-interest. All of these items are likely to be brought to the party. Where is the mechanism for sussing this all out and organizing it and into a constructive, functional, cohesive fabric? SME is our offered thought. We're not suggesting there couldn't be a thousand other uh, functional methods or processes, having an integrated synthesized system where funds come in, where technologies come in, where resources come in, where uh, expertise of all kinds and contr collaborative contributions from nations, research institutions, uh, for-profit and not-for-profit organizations and crowdsourced efforts and, and social movements, we see that there needs to be a referee process in this free-for-all it, it, it is going to evolve as it does, and we can do our very best to, to mitigate the, the non-optimal dynamic, dynamics and feed the optimal dynamics and give a mirror to the entirety of the process so that all players can be operating from the same playbook or the same vetted, accurate, true, uh, comprehensively uh, communicated information. So yes, this is an evolutionary process, the, na the, the nations of our world are not geared to collaboration. They don't know that dance. They haven't learned that dance. They need to learn that dance. They need educational mechanisms to deliver that, that mentoring, that facilitation, that education, that support, so that they can evolve that collaborative dance into an incredibly sophisticated and, and, and uh, synchronized and and correctly and wisely and discerningly applied set of transformative processes globally. So we absolutely want that to happen. We absolutely want to support it. And we absolutely understand there's plenty of rocks in, in the rock tumbler that are gonna to need to get the, the rough edges knocked off of them in the process. And, and we've used the metaphor before of if you have the rocks in the rock tumbler and you pour in a polishing grit, in, in with the rocks, they polish faster, smoother, better, without as many 
uh, moments of knocking of heads, if you will. So we want to buffer the process. We want to be a shock, a transformational shock absorber, educationally, facilitatively, and in terms of offering a, a safe, vetted, integrous, collaborative venue that is evolvable. Right now, the current system of systems is not adequately, we're not saying they're, they're not doing their best, they are, it's not adequately, rapidly, transformationally supportive and evolvable globally. And there needs to be a place where those conversations are had by any and every subgroup of humanity, any and every nation, any and every religion, any and every social movement. And, and last, and I know I'm yammering a lot and I apologize, social movements in the past have not been designed to succeed. Now that is a big statement. That, that might sound like a ludicrous statement. People working their hearts out to achieve collective goals that they feel are absolutely necessary and they, and they feel might determine the future generations of uh, the, the health and wealth and, and well-being of future generations in our world. And they don't know that their social movement is not designed to succeed. It's designed to battle. It's designed often to judge or remain in conflict with existing tribal dynamics, not to transform everyone out of tribe. Does it make sense that if you put a hundred rocks in a rock tumbler with a big container of glue, there a, a lot of glue in, in, the, in the mix, and let the glue solidify. If you turn the rock tumbler a thousand years, it's one rock that stays the same way. Each individual rock doesn't tumble against the other. They don't really change each other. And that's what tribe is doing. It's the glue that's holding us together in subgroups and, and larger national, national groups and, and cultural collectives and religious collectives. And it's keeping us from evolving while giving the semblance of evolution. It's the emberification model or dynamic we were speaking of in the past. The world getting stuck in a tr developmental trajectory that doesn't allow actual transformation. If we don't prioritize collective transformation first over the well-being of every nation, including the United States, if we don't if we don't prioritize collective transformation, healing, evolution, education, facilitation, and support to every individual and every group in the world moving forward, we're gonna have a non-cohesive global transformation. People will fight over scraps. They will battle and try to endlessly negotiate for profit. Oh, I didn't get mine. We didn't get enough. We didn't get what we wanted. We didn't get what we think we deserve. Uh, our egos of our individual selves or our, or our countries or our organizations or our, our particular uh, social movement groups, whatever they are, we didn't get what we th felt was right and appropriate. Therefore, we're going to drag our feet in this transformational process until we do. Okay, we got eight years. They can drag their feet all they want. And the more people that drag their feet in this process, the more people are going to die. I'm being very candid in this statement. The more people will suffer, the more people will die. And the people that will suffer and die most are the people that are the most marginalized populations of our world. There are a billion children that are at, at right now at severe risk in our world. And that's just now. What we do now determines, are there going to be two, three, or four billion people in severe risk in future? Or are we going to dial that billion down to 500,000 or 250,000? Are we going to maximize everybody's empowerment, everybody's contribution, everybody's expertise, everyone's knowledge, everyone's energies, everyone's positive dharmic intentions. Are we gonna maximize that? Are we gonna find a way to bring that power online 
in a non-competitive way, non-tribalized way, non-nationalistic way, and in an and in efficient, effective, and well-organized way. That is a tremendous task. And is this conversation that we're having right now, is it being adequately and comprehensively had around the world? We would suggest uh, it's unlikely, just in our experience. We're, we're not saying it couldn't be. We're saying it's not likely that it has been. And if it hasn't, how absolutely necessary is it that this conversation spread fast and this quality of conversation inclusive of all of these dynamics that we're discussing all of these concepts all of these necessities because people are going to need to reach choice points they're going to need to reach transformational choice points in their lives very fundamental choice points where they say i'm either going to support and climate change resolution or I'm not. I'm either in it 100% or I'm, I'm just going to let the, the, the tide carry me and I'll go where my organization says I should go or my friends say I should go, where my political party says I, says I should go, or where my history says I should go, my, my own karma or my own simulacra. This is a whole new paradigm of decision making that has not existed at this scale on our planet. And it's not being this conversation of this transformation of decision-making process is not being adequately distributed and, and stated at scale, loud enough, clear enough, consistently enough, and with enough comprehensiveness so that it's not 50% of the conversation. It's not, oh yeah, all we got to do is uh, innovate our way out of it, profitize our way out of it. Um, you see that that's, all, that that's a fragmented conversation. That's an incomplete understanding of the nature and essence of the challenge we face that would generate reactive, knee-jerk reactions of, oh, we'll just buy our way out, or we'll policy our way out, or we'll profit our way out, or we'll innovate our way out. Those are fear-based go-to reactive approaches and strategies. They're not enough. Not, they're not on their own. They're not nearly enough. There must be delivery systems that operate at global scale for transformation that work in sync with all of these nations and these organizations and these peoples in an equitable way, in a fair way, in a balanced way, in an integrous way. That's gotta happen.